Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Welcome, everybody. Amen. Good to see everybody tonight that is here with us tonight. We're going to, um, amen, make some announcements tonight as well. <clears throat> Today, we're going to talk about, <clears throat> amen, praise God, the topic, amen, is weaponized song. Amen. How worshiping God protects you. Amen. Um. And how many know what a needed, come on, amen, revelation right now. What a needed revelation right now. We need something, come on, amen, that is going to deal, come on, amen, with the forces of darkness that we're dealing with right now in the age we're living in. Who would have thought that a song could literally, come on, amen, literally 
protect you and overthrow your enemies. David understood it very well. He was a man of war. He's a man of war and God is a mighty man of war. And God uses simple things in this physical plane like singing and worshiping him, praising him. Amen. Hallelujah. Kneeling before him. I remember hearing a song one time, amen, by an, uh, really a, a popular uh, Christian rock group called Petra. And the song was, get on your knees and fight like a man. <laughs> I thought that was powerful. Get on your knees and fight like a man. Something about worship, about prayer, these weapons, come on, amen. Glory to God, uh, can be weaponized as uh, weapons of war. Amen. To overthrow darkness and to bring divine protection to the church. So we're going to pray. We're going to jump in the word. Amen. We have a, a short time tonight because I have to make some announcements. Uh, but I'm going to talk a little bit about worship tonight and, and kind of open this up. And we'll see how the Lord takes us because God has been having me deal with some specific things. So let's first of all, let's see who's in the house. It looks like Brian, man of God. Come on. Amen. Brother Brian Holly is in the house. Amen. Joy Lebanon. God bless you. Thanks for joining us again. Amen. Um, Annie Quiner. God bless you. Joyce Menninger. Come on in. Thank you. Michael Calkins. Dan, Daniel Breen. God bless you, Daniel. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Amen. If I don't, amen. Uh, if I don't uh, um, <clears throat> acknowledge you, I don't see you on there. Amen. If I Amen. Of course, maybe you want to be hidden. Come on. Amen. But welcome. Come on in. That's right. That's right. The blood of Jesus. You see, I'm wearing red tonight. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Come on. Amen. The weapon of war. Come on. Amen. Uh, and uh, Nancy, God bless you, Nancy. Thanks for joining me tonight. Amen. And Flora Lamb. God bless you, Flora. Long time no see. Praise God. Come on in. Come on in. Amen. Brother Tav, they're on YouTube. Welcome periscope youtube y'all come on in we're getting ready to jump into this revelation tonight amen we got a short time so i got to get going here amen uh as you can see i have a really nice background tonight my background is the feathers come on somebody amen glory to god the protective glory to god in the secret place of the most high abiding under the shadow of the almighty come on amen hallelujah the amplified says whose power no foe can withstand. The devil's not coming into the presence of God. Come on, amen, to attack his God's body. Come on, amen. We're seated at the right hand in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and the enemy has no access to us. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God bless you, true. Amen. Orion, God bless you, Orion. Welcome. Come on in tonight. God bless all of you. All right, let's go ahead and, and, uh, and let's do this tonight. God is talking, amen, already. He's already speaking. I'm, in, I'm, I'm excited about the divine protection of the Lord and what God is doing. Now, first of all, I like to say we don't want to give the devil any glory. We want to give God all the glory and all the praise. We don't want to give the devil any, come on, um, props. We don't want him to, um, to think in any way that uh, uh, he has the upper hand. Uh, the devil does not have the upper hand. Come on, amen. Jesus sits on the throne. Come on, amen. He is in full authority and power. So let's go ahead and pray. Amen. He's cleaning up my glasses here. All right, Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to come and release the life-giving word. Oh, hallelujah. For you said, Lord, in your word, God, that your word is, is like precious gold and silver tried in the fire, and your word always comes out always comes out pure, always comes out right. Lord, I thank you for the word. Even when Joseph received a prophetic word, you said that he, his word came, his actually, it was his word that came to pass. The word will not fail. The word will not fail. I thank you, Father God, that your word is true and your word prevails against every enemy. I thank you that, Lord, this is a Lord, the COVID-19 free uh, uh, zone right now on this broadcast. This is a COVID-19 free zone. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you right now that cancer, all types of diseases and infirmities and sickness has no right to the body of Christ. 
And so, Father, I pray right now for revelation to begin to flow. Lord, as I begin to share tonight, that you would pour out special revelation on the church. Lord God, that you would open our eyes. And I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Take control of my tongue, my ear, and my mouth, every part of me, and use me tonight for your glory. I yield myself to you as a willing vessel and let revelation pour out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So welcome, welcome. God bless you, Brittany. Brittany Rays. God bless you, Brittany. Thanks for coming and joining us tonight, Kathleen Nelson. Glory to God. Yes, God is a good God. Hallelujah. We're not going to give the devil any glory. God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. All right, let's go into Psalms 91. Glory to God, Psalms 91. I'm going to repeat myself a little bit. Amen. I'm excited because the word is still true. And you can always stand on Psalms 91. Praise the Lord. Always stand on Psalms 91. God bless you, Larry Erickson. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right, in, uh, in the first uh, verse of Psalms 91, glory to God, it says, uh, God bless you, Russell Wood. Come on in, Russell, God bless you. Praise the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, who, glory to God, hallelujah, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, let me just talk about that a little bit. Do you know that God, come on, does not have a shadow Amen. Like what it's saying here. It's not actually talking about a shadow. A shadow is when light hits a solid object and it casts this dark image. Glory to God. That's not the kind of shadow. This is only metaphor or words to express. Come on. Amen. That there is something that actually uh, falls from God. Now, I believe what this is talking about when he says here, um, I'm going to read it in the um, and then amplify it in just a moment. But when he says this here in this particular passage, I believe he's talking about the effulgence, which is a, a Greek word that talks about, come on, the outshine of rain, a rays of the presence of the Lord, like a residue of God's presence. I believe the shadow of the Almighty is actually the residue of God's presence that falls from God. Now, the scripture that I have to uh, talk about with that, and I'm going to do a couple of scriptures here that will confirm what I'm saying. The first one I would like to look at, and we're going to go back here to Psalms 91, so keep your um, keep your, your um, finger there. Be ready to go back. But in Isaiah, glory to God, Isaiah, glory to God. I'm just going to take my time and deliver this real quick here tonight before I go any further. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is great having you tonight. Having you join me tonight as we as we tap in. And Isaiah, the sixth chapter, <clears throat> You many of you know where I'm going. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this here. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, it says, In the year the king as I died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. So my emphasis tonight is going to be on God sitting on the throne. Amen. High and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And that's the other part of it. His train filling the temple. Now, um, understand here, when God's train fills the temple, the train, you guys know, the train actually represents, come on, like when you say train, it's that like the woman's wedding dress, wedding garment. Come on, when she's wearing that wedding dress, she's got that long train that follows her. So what happens when, come on, when God, come on, amen, comes in the midst or you're in God's midst, Come on, amen. You're in, come on, the train of his presence. In other words, it's falling from him. It's as God walks around. Now, I just want you to imagine God walking around and, and like a woman is walking around with the wedding dress on and what follows her is this long white garment. She's wearing this train, this wedding dress and this long white garment is following her and, and a train and you have to hold that train up. Come on, amen. People would have to hold that train up as she's coming down, come on the aisle. Well, in the same manner, but God is decked and it's coming from God. It's oozing from him. In other words, when God walks, there's a, come on, amen, there's a glory, come on, like a train that fills, come on, the house. It fills the place. And so this is what he's talking about. He said he was high and lifted up and his train, come on, amen, fill the temple. His skirts, it actually says his skirts. This is the actual rendering. The skirts of his garment are, is a train of the glory of God. And the Bible says God is light and God covers himself with light. So God is dressed in light and white light. Come on in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. That's similar to what, amen, um, similar to what uh, was, uh, what, what happened with, um, amen, uh, with Adam in the garden. When God first created Adam, Adam was clothed with light. That's why he said he was naked. When we talked about this before, he was clothed with light. 
And so it's important that we realize, come on, amen, the light, come on, amen, of God's presence. Come on, amen, the glory of God, it falls from him. It, it emanates from him. And so when you see this glory, now this is that train filled in the temple. The angels were declaring, they were, they were, the angels were, were, were saying, holy. Come on, I'm, I'm not going to have time to read all that, but they were saying, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And, and, uh, and our objects will begin to shake at the voice of their praise. The post, the doorpost begin to move at the voice of the angelic worship going on. Now, listen, I want to let you know something that when you start worshiping God, come on, amen. There is a force, come on, a vibration. Glory to God. There is a vibration and a force that begins to rock. Listen, I believe God is releasing angelic praise, come on, amen, into his church in this hour. And I believe we're going to start tapping into realms of worship that is going to invite angels, come on, amen. And we're going to start experiencing the glory of God like we've never experienced before because our God is weaponizing worship. He's weaponizing praise. He's always been doing it. Matter of fact, many of us don't even realize that a lot of times when we've been praising God and worshiping God, there have been unseen, come on, dangers. Come on, amen, and unseen enemies. Come on, amen, that we've actually been protected from as a result of our praise and our worship. Our praise and worship is one of it is intercession. Come on into the atmosphere. Come on, amen, and to begin to drive out the darkness and move demons away. Understand worship and praise is that powerful. When it comes out of a pure heart, worship and praise is that powerful. Glory to God. Now listen, go back with me. Come on, amen, uh, uh, to uh, Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now where else have we seen a shadow in Scripture? And this is a really good one. Go in your Bible to the book of Acts. Come on, amen. The book of Acts, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Welcome. Come on in. I see uh, Michael Olson, Daytona. God bless you, Daytona. Catherine Crystal, God bless you. Naomi Lindbergh, thanks for joining us. Derek, Derek, God bless you, Derek. Marie, come on, amen. Marie, Terry, thank you for joining me. Amen. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a God we serve. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, uh, so in, in the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, <clears throat> and in verse 15, let's look at this verse 15. Amen. Incredible, incredible scripture. It says, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on the beds, on beds, and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter, y'all come on, this is rich right here. At least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. My goodness, look at this, y'all. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, in which those were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Oh my God, are y'all getting this? You understand here that this shadow, this outring of God's glory, come on, amen, it's just like the same, come on, when Peter walked and the people got this revelation. Now, that means they understood, come on, something about, come on, amen, the actual, come on, presence of God that drips down from God. They understood something about that. They realized that this was a man of God. He was carrying, come on, he was an apostle of the Lord, and he was carrying the glory of God upon him. And they realized that if they could just get, come on, amen, the sick people in the midst of his shadow, Come on, amen, on the, the cast and see how I many of God, come on, doesn't have any darkness in him at all. So when God does it, it's a light. So it was not the actual darkness. It was the light of God, the presence of God coming off of Peter. Come on, there was actually causing healing to be in the manifest. Come on, amen, in the bodies of these people. The shadow of the almighty, the shadow of the almighty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. I want you to see this. It's actually the word effligence. It's, it's a word that means, come on, amen, an outring of the glory of God. It's a residue, a presence of God. Glory to God that, it, that is upon believers. And I believe that worship produces this. I believe that worship of God increases the glory and the train of God in your life. I believe that worship, come on, and prayer and intercession and going after God and learning to live in, this, live in, in that secret place, it increases, come on, this train or it brings a physical and a visible manifestation of that train of glory. Come on, amen, in our midst. Now, I want to read uh, uh, this, uh, the rest of this scripture because it's loaded. 
I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Notice he's declaring this. The psalmist is saying out of his mouth, first of all, he's decreeing that if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you abide under the shadow, the effulgence, the, the outshine ring of God's glory, the train of his presence. Come on, amen. That you abide under it. Come on, amen. And then he says, I will say of the Lord. So now he's making a declaration. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Now, listen, I love this because as he's making these declarations, this is praise. This is worship. This is him offering his heart to the Lord and he's declaring what God said Come on about him. He received a revelation in his spirit and he began to declare it. He said, he is my refuge. He got this revelation from God. God is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare, come on, of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And he shall cover thee, come on, with his feathers. Come on, somebody, with his feathers. And under his wings, come on, somebody, glory to God, under his wings, thou shalt trust his truth. That's the word of God, the knowledge of scripture, the knowledge of the promises. All the promises of God are yea and amen. God said something about you. Grab it, believe it, begin to declare it out your mouth. He says that he covers thee with his feathers. Come on, amen. And he says, and under his wings, glory to God, shalt thou trust. Glory to God, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And then if you look in Psalms, come on, amen, uh, in, in Psalms um, 22, amen, I believe it's 22 as well. Let me go there real quick because I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Glory to God, I'm coming back. God is so good. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 22 and verse uh, verse 2. And he says here, or verse 3, it says here, um, but thou art holy. O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. You are holy. Come on, amen. Glory to God. You would dwell in the place where the praise of Israel are offered. Where the praise of Israel are offered. Now look, look at this. He says in verse 3, But you are holy, O you who dwell in the holy place where the praise of Israel are offered. So God says, or and through the scriptures, that the psalmist was saying that where God's praises are offered, Come on, amen. God begins to be enthroned. Come on, and he get, begins to be declared holy. He begins to be established as holy in that place. Now, what devil is going to be reckless enough? What sickness, what disease, what infirmity, come on, what spirit of poverty, what death is going to try to come into the very presence of God? Woo, glory to God, I feel the anointing. Let's go back up to verse 1 in the Amplified in Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow, the effulgence, come on, the train of God's presence, come on, amen, of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand, whose, whose power no foe can withstand, come on, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. And so here's where we're coming together. God bless you, Michael. Thanks for sharing that. Michael says it equals, come on, amen, I like that. It equals is sitting down in or Mary's. Come on, amen, that's that joining, that's that uniting. That's right, because that's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about how God actually, come on, inhabits your praise. And what he does is he dresses himself in your praise and your praise becomes weaponized. Mm, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Your praise becomes weaponized. Your worship becomes weaponized when you start declaring what God's word says. Hallelujah. You got to get the word in you first. Amen. Now watch this. He says here in verse um, uh, verse 5, I, I want to go too fast. Let's start to see in verse 4. And under his wings shalt thou trust, glory to God, his truth shall by thy, be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for destruction, come on, that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come, come on, y'all, shall not come nigh thee. 
Only with thine eyes, it will not come nigh you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. God says the wicked, come on, amen, have a reward for their activity and their actions. But God said you will, that will not come near you. You will only with your eyes see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, now catch this revelation. Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation or thy dwelling place where you remain fixed. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Where you remain fixed. Come on. Amen. And unmovable, remaining in that secret place at the right hand. Do you understand that the actual secret place is the right hand of God where Jesus Christ is seated? That is the secret place. That is also the cleft of the rock that Jesus, or I should say God, hid Moses in when Moses saw, come on, amen, the backside of God. God said, get inside the cleft of this rock. Jesus is the cleft of the rock. That is the hidden place. That is the place, come on, the secret place. That is a place God has called you to be. It's in the hidden place, the secret place of the most high God. Come on, somebody. Man, I'm getting stirred up off in here. I don't know if you, I don't know about y'all. Come on, y'all get them hearts going. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, get them hearts going, those likes going. Listen, we are declaring the word of God concerning God's divine protection over you. God is weaponizing your praise, weaponizing your worship. The, the devil is a lie. He's been trying to steal. Come on, somebody. He's been trying to steal the power. Come on, amen, of worship and praise from the church. Come on, somebody. Making us think, oh, it just sounds good. That's a great song. Oh, that, that, that's just a beautiful song. I just love the way that song sounds. That song is a weapon of war. Come on, amen. It's your battle axe. Come on, somebody. It's your spear. Come on, it's your sword. Come on, amen. Glory to God, it's your slingshot. Your weapon, come on, your weapon of war. Come on, it's the power, come on, of the worship of God that actually protects you. Glory to God, you're weaponized. Glory to God. Now watch this. He says, I love this one right here. A thousand shall fall at thy, uh, thy uh, oh, I love this because I skipped over it. A thousand shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Glory to God. It shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high of the habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Come on. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. My God. Y'all, I'm getting stirred up all of it by myself. Y'all better share this. Y'all share this. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, <laughs> he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up. Come on. In their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. You got angelic protection. Come on, when you're worshiping God, when you're praising God, angels rush, come on, to your side. Angels are there, come on, to make sure you're protected when you love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and his strength. When you give God your worship, when you give God your praise, when you have the fear of the Lord, you can count on angelic protection. God is watching over his church, people. And if you love God with all your heart, get ready for divine protection in these last days. Amen. It says here, they shall tread. Come on, amen. Uh, they shall tread upon the lion, the uh, an adder, that's a snake. The serpent, the snake won't even be able to get you. Come on, amen. The young lion, glory to God and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me. See the see what it says? Love songs to the Lord. Just start singing love songs to the Lord. Just start worshiping God. Just start, just start worshiping God in the spirit and in the truth. Just start loving God, singing his word to him. Come on, amen. Start singing about the blood. See, I'm wearing red today. Start singing about the blood. Start saying, oh, the blood of Jesus. It makes, come on, it washes me white as snow. Come on, amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It empowers me. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, all the blood of Jesus, it causes my sins to be washed away. All the blood of Jesus. Come on, just begin to declare it out your mouth. And as you declare the blood and sing about it and declare it, you're putting the devil to flight. Amen. Here's what the promise is. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I will deliver him. God said deliverance is coming to you. Come on, amen. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. How many know that God said in his word that he put his word 
above his name. God wants you to know just not his name, but a revelation of his name. Come on, somebody. He wants you to know intimately who he is, not just saying his name, but knowing intimately who he is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It says here, I will deliver him and send him home because he have known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Come on, somebody. I will deliver him, honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Somebody say long life. Come on, somebody say long life. God says he's promised you long life, divine protection. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Protection is yours. God wants to weaponize your praise. Do you know that praise is a weapon? Praise is a weapon. Uh, I had to write down a definition because I wanted you to see this. When God gave me this word on weaponizing your praise, I saw this word weaponized and I said, well, God, what, this is powerful coming up in my spirit. He says a, a weaponized means to adapt for use. Look at this, y'all, as a weapon of war. My God, come on, somebody to adapt. Watch this for use as a weapon of war. And that means that when you sing certain songs, come on. Amen. When you sing the song of the Lord, when you begin to declare what God's word is saying out of your mouth on a daily basis, and we're talking about diligently seeking the Lord, you know, so many times people come on. Amen. What they do is they only worship God when they're going through hard things. That is a travesty. That is a no-no. If you want to really walk in God's divine protection, you need to make your life a praise. You need to let your daily life be a time of worship before God. Your every moment of your day thinking about him, keeping him, keeping yourself conscious of him, God consciousness aware, singing his praises, acknowledging him. Come on, amen. You can do this even when you're working. You can do it. I've done it. You can do it. Come on, amen. In different environments, you can keep God at the center. Do you know that part of praise and worship is keeping your mind stayed on the Lord? It's not just about singing a song because how many of our worship is actually of the heart. So if you can keep a song in your heart, if you can have something in your mind, come on, it's giving God the glory. Come on, amen. What you're doing is becoming a weapon, come on, that the, God is using as a weapon to destroy the forces of darkness that are arrayed against God's people and against yourself. Divine protection. Come on, amen. That's what God wants. Now, see, God began to tell me about how praise, what it does. Praise actually activates your faith. Now, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. But praise actually activates or it stimulates faith on the inside of a person. So you can have, watch this, you can have, come on, uh, uh, some things going on in your life. And you'll be like, God, I don't know what to do. But if you'll just praise him, uh, uh, glory to God. If you'll just start praising him, come on, amen. As you start praising God, come on, amen, it will start, come on, to cause your faith to rise up. Glory to God, it'll begin to activate your faith. Many times I have been, come on, going through hard times. And all of a sudden, I would start, come on, praising God or singing a song. And when I would do it, my faith would start arising. Or if I would start declaring the word out of my mouth. Because see, worship is not just a song. Worship is declaring the word of God out of your mouth. Come on, somebody. My Jesus, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You start declaring that word. Out, you're giving worship to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Ruth Miller. Thanks for joining me. Amen. Glory to God, woman of God. Thanks for joining me. When you start worshiping God, it activates divine confidence. It starts activating divine strength. When you start worshiping God, come on, it starts causing you to see things differently. You start, your perception changes. That means if depression is there, it starts breaking. Come on, fear starts leaving. You start praising God, fear starts going. You start shouting the word of God out your mouth at the enemy. Come on, this is what the word of God says. Hallelujah. You're breaking through the atmosphere. Your worship, your worship, your praise is a weapon. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. How did he weapon of praise, weapon of war, weapon of praise. Glory to God. When you worship God, your worship becomes the, the devil's demise. Because what you are saying when you worship God, and how many know that this worship is actually the highest form. Watch this, y'all. Worship and praise are the highest form. Come on. Amen. Of, of prayer. Instead of asking God for stuff. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Instead of asking God for stuff, you can start praising him like it's already done. And instead of asking him for it, 
you will hurry that thing up into manifestation in your life because you're not saying, God, I'm just trying to ask you for this. I believe it's already done. Come on, somebody. And you start praising him. So it's an actual activity of faith. Praise is an action of faith. When you start praising, you are putting faith into action, especially in hard times. When you start praising, you are putting faith in action. Glory to God. When you start worshiping, you are putting faith in action. You are activating your faith. Come on, somebody. It's already done. I remember times, glory to God, God would just tell me, and I'll tell you this one experience I had. I was in the Illinois area doing a revival some years ago. And I was down in the in the uh, in the lower level and I was spending time, come on, in prayer, worshiping God, listening to God. That's right. Singing in tongues to Melody. God bless you, Melody. Thanks for joining me. And as I was singing and praising God, yep, speaking in tongues too, amen, being weaponized. I was getting weaponized. You can pray in the Holy Ghost and get weaponized. Glory to Jesus. As I was do, be, beginning to do this, amen, as I was doing this, all of a sudden, come on, amen, the Lord spoke to me because I was getting ready to go preach. And this is what the Lord told me. He says, I want you, <laughs> when you stand in front of the people tonight, I want you to tell them, because it was a house meeting. And you know, when them house meetings can be pretty powerful, that meeting was packed out. And the Lord said, I want you to go up and tell the people when you get ready to minister, I want you to tell them, say this, it's already done. Just tell them that. The Lord told me to tell y'all, it's already done. You guys, listen, when I said that, I got up there and said that. I have been spending so much time praising God, spending time in the word, listening to God, praying in the Holy Ghost, because that's one of the, the quickest ways to activate your faith as well, because you're going past your mind and your head and you're getting into the spirit and you're praising and you're worshiping. Glory to God. All of a sudden, come on, amen, as I'm doing this and I come out there and tell them this, they begin to respond in faith. When I said, God said, it's already done. The people begin to shout. I'm telling you, the anointing fell in that house. And all of a sudden, one woman started getting delivered. A demon started to come out of this woman. I was like, oh my God. But God started sending people free. I said, God said, it's already done. He said, it's already done. And the people started praising. Listen, that was my sermon that night. I couldn't even get into my sermon. The Holy Spirit just moved in such a way. He said, it is done. Come on, somebody, tell them that. Tell them it's already done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My praise is a weapon. Come on, somebody. Your praise is a weapon. Your praise is a weapon. Start praising God. Amen. Do you know the children of Israel's worship and praise was so powerful? Their worship and their praise was so powerful to the other nations who were afraid of them whenever they would start praising their God. They, they, they were like, uh-oh, they're praising their God. They're praising their God. And they would get one particular incident occurred where they, they were uh, they were getting ready to go through a battle, but they had been, uh, they were sin in the camp. The children of Israel had sin in the camp. See, that's one of the main things that will cut the flow of the power real quick is when there's unrepented sin uh, in your life. You have to deal with sin. Come on, amen. And then as you lift your praise up to God and begin to declare it, God will begin to come in and magnify his name and glory, and, and he begins to inhabit that praise. And 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 uh, but but there was one time, uh, it was in the book of uh <clears throat> Samuel when Eli, come on, amen, uh, and his head didn't he didn't rear his sons right, and there was sin in the camp. And uh and, and God was allowing judgment to come to Eli's house, Samuel prophesied it, and the ark of the covenant was captured. And, uh, and, and when it was captured, what happened was, uh, what happened was in that passage is that the, the, the children of Israel were so, uh, they were so scared. They, they were, they were at a place. They were like, oh my goodness. Um, uh, they were like, oh my goodness, we're, we're in trouble because the, the battle is coming toward us and, and they, they were in sin. Uh, but, and, and God was bringing judgment on the house of Eli and God was going to let the ark, the ark was taken, but here, and, but all of a sudden they begin to praise. And, and the scriptures actually says that the, the men were told, listen, this is what they were told. The other army was told this. I believe it was the Philistines. I believe so. The other army was told this. Listen, they're praising. They're worshiping their God. You know what happened before when they do this kind of stuff? They said, fight like you've never fought before. <laughs> That's what they said. They were afraid of the praises of Israel. I hope I got that story right because there's a couple of different stories like that. <laughs> but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. 
They were like, come on, amen, fight like my fight like you never fought before. And you know what? Because the children of Israel had sin in the camp, their praise wasn't weaponized that day. And God allowed the Ark of the Covenant to be taken captive. Now, I want you to see this. It's very, very important here. Glory to God, sin and worship don't mix. You got to get rid of the sin out of your life. You got to repent of that activity. And you can't be playing with darkness. Matter of fact, if you play, if you play with sin and with darkness and you try to worship God, what it'll do is it'll open you up to spirits of perversion and the devil will come in there and deceive you and you'll get you'll fall in love with the sounds of worship. You'll fall in love with the styles of worship. You'll fall in love with the activity, the outward activity, but you will not have the intimacy of God. And as a result of that, not having the intimacy of God, you will have a dead, ineffective ministry. Because, listen, when you're in sin, you're shutting down the connection of heaven so the glory of God can manifest itself. Come on, amen, in your life. Our worship is a weapon. Come on, somebody. But when we're worshiping God, we got to make sure that we've laid ourselves down, that we've repented, that we've asked God to cl cleanse us by the blood. Come on, we believe in the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. My time's about up. I'm going to have to close this down. Amen. So understand their weapon, their praise was a weapon. Come on, amen. It was a weapon of war. And the Bible declares in Psalms, come on, amen. <clears throat> it actually declares, come on, in Psalms, come on, that when we praise and worship God, I believe it's in the eighth chapter, it talks about how that, uh, that God uses praise and worship uh, to, uh, of, a, of, an infant, of an infant to steal. Now, he says an, of an infant to literally silence the enemy. Why did he use an infant? Why did he say out of the mouth of the babes and suckling, thou hast ordained praise to steal or quiet the avenger, to quiet the enemy? Why did he say that? Because pure, clean heart, come on, amen, worship to God, come on, somebody, is a weapon of war. It's a weapon of war. It's a weapon of war. Somebody say, get the sin out. Come on, amen. Get the sin out. Get the sin out. We got to repent. Come on. Amen. Zephaniah 317. Real quick here. God himself will start singing. It's right in the scripture. Do you know that God actually sings? God himself will start singing. It says here in Zephaniah 317, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. <laughs> he, will, he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee, come on somebody, with singing. God will start singing. Now listen, you don't want to get, get God singing because when God gets to singing, stuff starts breaking, stuff starts being cleansed, stuff starts, you listen, weapons of war start being released. When God starts singing, deliverance starts to happen. Come on somebody, God wants us to let the praises come forth. Now I like this right here because the definition for singing here in the Hebrew, and the Hebrew word for singing here is this. Here it is. It means a creaking or shrill sound. Now, listen, I've been to Africa and some of these other countries, Ethiopians do it. Some others do it in different uh, countries. They'll let out this shrill, like a, I let, let these different sounds come out of, of, of sounds of praise, sounds of, of, of celebration, sounds of worship. I believe there comes in those sounds, breakers. Breaker anointings, breaker anointings, breaker anointings. God want to break stuff. Come on, somebody. When you get people that understand the purity of worship and the pure heart of worship, stuff will start to break and deliverance will start to come. Come on. Amen. It means to shout, shout triumphantly, make proclamations. That's what he was saying when he was saying singing here. God will actually sing and make shouts and shrills and, and proclamations over you. In other words, God gets in your praise and it's no longer you, but it's the Lord singing through you and he's taking your enemies out while you're praising God. Sometimes we've had heaven join in our own worship in our own local church. We've had heaven join in our worship. We've had more than one person at one time in our church. They will all of a sudden, while the worship is going on, they'll start hearing angels singing. One, uh, one sister says she heard, she came in church. She was like, what is that? She started looking up to the front and she said she could see me playing the keyboard and the dancers and the drums are going and she didn't see anybody singing. But we were just up there moving and glorifying God. And I might have been saying a few things. And all of a sudden she said she heard some other singing going on. And she's like, where is that coming from? And she kept looking, but she couldn't see anybody's mouth moving or anything responding in the, in the worship team. 
the Lord had opened her ears and she began to hear the sound of heaven invading our worship. She began to see the sound of heaven invading our worship. And then another, come on, sister said, I heard the same thing. And then I talked to my wife on the phone. I said, you know, so-and-so said they heard something last Sunday, da da da, the church. And she goes, I heard the same thing. <laughs> it started coming out. People were hearing into the spiritual realm as we begin to worship. Glory to God. That's right, Reba. Come on, God bless you, Reba's in the house. Sat, uh, uh, Sunday, they were present with the wind. Oh, yes, they were. Come on, somebody, amen. Listen, God wants to cover you with his canopy of his presence. He wants to drop you. He wants to drop his presence on you. He wants to drop his glory on you. Worship and praise literally illuminates. It encapsulates. You're, co you're covered in a membrane of God's presence. You're under divine protection when you have a pure heart and you worship. That's what God wants from his church. And I'm telling you, I believe it's being restored. I believe pure worship is being restored. Come on to the church. Now, listen. Now, tomorrow, I got to tell you about this because we got some we got some special guest uh, speakers that are coming in the evening uh, at our local church. But God gave me a revelation. And here's what he told me. He says, Calvin, I'm giving you permission to do church differently in the 21st century and beyond. <laughs> That's actually a book uh, that I read. Amen. Hallelujah. But what the Lord showed me was this. He says, I want you to take one Sunday a month as a type of tithe. And I want you, come on, watch this, to worship me the entire time. I don't want no preaching or anything. I just want you to worship me. Glory to God. Of course, exhortation will be not preaching. Uh, it'll be just like an exhortation of word. If we do exhortation or prayer, that's a different story. Because you can combine prayer and worship together. But he said, I want you to worship me for the entire time. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And I said, okay, God. And I said, I'm going to do it. And so this Sunday, glory to God, this Sunday, the Lord told me to do this. Come on, amen. I'm going to worship God this Sunday. We did it actually last month, and it was incredible. We just worshiped God the entire time. And the glory of God began to fall. And we had some intercession come out, some different forms of intercession come out and declarations. And some prophetic ministry came. Some deliverances began to come. And God was manifesting his glory. We just worshiped. And God said to me, I want you to do this once a month. I want you to do it. So we've actually decided to do this on our second Sunday. That's tomorrow. We're going to worship God tomorrow. Come on. Amen. Now, in the evening at 7 p.m., we are having, amen, our guests, amen, speakers coming in. Praise the Lord. Let me see if I can pull that up here real quick here. Praise the Lord. We're having our guest speakers coming in. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Amen. But our, let me tell you about our service first, how it's going to start. Amen. Glory to God. You have prayer and worship at your church tonight? At your, awesome. Praise God. She said it was powerful. Our church is at, come on, amen, 6180 Highway 65 at 1 o'clock p.m. We're going to be worshiping. Amen. I, I know, Kathleen, I know already. We're going to be worshiping on another part of the city. Come on, amen. That's right. We're going to be worshiping in another part of the city in Fridley. So our address is 6180 Highway 65. Come on. Amen. Highway 65. And, and you got if you want to come through the, you got to come through door eight, the entrance in the back. Come on. Amen. The uh, south side entrance It's right by the lake. You can't miss it. It's a big, beautiful church over there. That God has grace, given us grace and blessings to utilize. And it's a very big space, so for social distancing, it's fine. Come on, amen. It's huge. Come on, amen. A very big space. And we're going to be worshiping God. Amen. Worship, that's right, is going on throughout the city, Kathleen. That's right. We're going to be worshiping God. And so the Lord put this in my heart to do. Now, I didn't have a clue that they were doing this uh, uh, at, at, uh, over on Lake Street. Come on, until recently. But this is what we do. God already given it to us. Amen. And how many know we're committing ourselves to what the Lord told us to do? Now watch this. At 1 at 1 p.m., we're having our worship session. Come on, amen. 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Amen. We're having our worship session. And it, it's going to be a short time of worship, not a long time. Because after that, at 7 p.m., we are having David and Siggy Oblander from, amen, from down in Georgia. They actually, she's actually from Germany. This woman's got a powerful, incredible testimony being uh, her father was a draftsman for Hitler. 
was a draftsman for Hitler. This woman's got a powerful testimony. Uh, a very revelatory teacher. When she gets up and starts ministering, I liken her to come on Trinity on the Matrix. Some of y'all saw the movie The Matrix when Trinity, the woman, come out. She opened the jacket up and had all them weapons. <laughs> I, you know, when she opens her jacket up, come on, Amen in the spirit. She starts. Da, 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 da. I mean, revelation is flowing. We are so excited to have Siggy and David Oblander with us on tomorrow evening. It's going to be life changing. I'm telling y'all, I'm not telling you this to puff this thing up. I'm telling you, this is going to be powerful. We're going to have a lit service. Come on, because we're going to worship first that, that afternoon and come back for a revelation in the word of God. That means we're going to be ready. Come on, amen, for what God's about to do. So we're inviting you to join us. It's going to be powerful. Amen. You don't want to miss it. Come on. Amen. Also, I'm going to make sure I announce this uh, on um, the 22nd and 23rd of October. We have Kevin Leal coming. Amen. We have Kevin Leal, Prophet Kevin Leal coming, uh, a, a man of God, a, 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 a seasoned, mature man of God who has God has used at times to mentor and speak into my life in very important times. Come on. Amen. He's going to be here ministering for two nights. October 22nd and 23rd, 7 p.m. night. That's a Thursday and a Friday night. He's coming to minister the word of God to us. Amen. All the way from uh, Florida. I believe that's Florida. And so you're going to be really, really blessed. 7 p.m. nightly. We're looking forward to him coming. Amen. And, and it's going to be rich. Amen. Listen, uh, I just want to come on tonight, share a word with you quick about the weaponizing of, of your praise and how worshiping God can protect you. And I'm going to probably come on. Uh, come on. Amen. Uh, uh, if not tomorrow night on Monday, and I'm going to finish this up and talk about it. Uh, I, I just want to tell you, you see, I got the feathers all around me back here. I'm covered and I got the blood. Come on. Amen. I want to let the devil know. I want you to know, come on, that Jesus has promised us divine protection. If we will love him and we will keep him first, he's given us, come on his word that we can dwell in the secret place of the most high that we can sit where all spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Glory to God. Now, listen, if you want to be a blessing and sow into the ministry, you can at paypal.me slash open heaven right there on the screen or cash app dollar sign Apostle Calvin. Listen, we want to invite you to come out. We welcome you to come. Amen. Uh, uh, we welcome you to come out. Amen. Uh, tomorrow at one o'clock and also 7 p.m. We're going to we're going to stop early so we can be ready for the 7 p.m. session. Come on. Amen. Uh, we want to see the Lord move in a mighty way and we want people to get blessed. So come and enjoy. Amen. Also, there will be some prophetic ministry that will actually be taking place at the end. Come on of each service. Come I have furnished the table before you, the presence of your enemies. I am your strength. I am your God. I am your help. I am your God. I am the one you should trust. Say for Lord, stand on my word. Stand on my promise. Don't be moved. Stand, 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 stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't be moved. Don't be grieved. Don't be disappointed. Praise me, saith the Lord. Praise me during this season and time. Let your praises come forth like shouts. Let your praises come forth like proclamations. Let your praises come forth, saith the Lord. Begin to decree my blood. Begin to decal, declare my blood. Watch me move, saith the Lord. Watch me move. Watch me move. Watch me move. Yo, I'm telling you, it's just flowing out. I feel the life of God. I feel the life of God. The anointing of God is coming to the church in a greater way. Be in expectation, y'all. Marvelous things are about to take place. Amen. All right, well, God bless you. I better get going here. Amen. You have a good night, and we look forward to seeing many of you tomorrow. Come with your shouting shoes on. Come on, amen. That's what he should tell us we've grown up. Come ready to dance, ready to praise him, because we for the shout, and we for the praise the Lord. There's going to be some major praising off in the house. Amen. All right, blessings. Have a good night, and know that your praise is a weapon. Glory to God. Amen.